Bro. We're starting the podcast. Can you stop laughing? <laughs> yes, bro. Dissing. So my so my my best friend Stephanie um sent me this uh reel uh earlier today. And dude, I am f- Hey Prolific Podcast. On today's episode, we are gonna be talking about how you have friendships with the opposite sex. Hey guys, I'm okay. I'm all right. Joey doesn't even punch that hard anyway. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Wop. Uh, no, but today we're going to be talking about what Joey just told you guys. Uh, friendships with the opposite sex, especially when you are uh, married. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm, we mm-hmm. discussed. And engaged. And engaged. And engaged. And dating, and, I mean, and even yeah, dating. Yeah, yeah. But I think yeah. uh, obviously it becomes for real yeah. when you're yeah. married, right? Yeah. Like you yeah. are one with another person and then um, it becomes yep. of eternal importance. And um, so we discussed this uh, topic a little bit before and uh, through some of our um, episodes about dating and yeah. marriage. Go check but, them out. Go but, check them out. Yeah, the, they're kind of older episodes, but we didn't park on this for yep. long enough. And so we want to park on it uh, today. And um, so so I want to start off this way, right? So we, we kind of started with a little funny, but... A little funny. I have heard, <laughs> I have heard... <laughs> Uh, people say before my best friend and then they they speak of mm-hmm. a somebody of the opposite sex yeah yeah and they're married mm-hmm. or they're engaged and that just hits me so mm-hmm. wrong bro yeah can you help me figure out why that hits me so wrong well it's hard man because you know even even our editor as an example uh his now wife right and I and him we were all friends before so Mirari, before they were married. Yeah, before they were married, Mirari and I were very good buddies. And um, as was Augustine and I. You know, right. we were we were very good buddies. But there was there was the moment where uh I think the only the only way you can kind of put it is the the honor that you have for that other person. Mm. Particularly again, this is two married people, right? Well, two people that like actually they got uh I, I'm gonna I'm gonna scream it offset. Augustini, when did you get married? What year? Twenty fifteen. Twenty fifteen. So he was married two years before you were before i was and not just two years before i was but two years before a year and a half before but you were dating mirari for five years uh, yeah. i think longer than that no, <laughs> yeah yeah 20 you better know, so, you better know so, boy. <laughs> so so he was dating for like six ish years yeah. before like he was married and so out of all of that like like there was a point where i as mirari's friend mm-hmm. i had to shift well okay this is this is Christopher's like girlfriend. This is Christopher's fiance. And and then this is Christopher's wife. And then I had to shift how how I view and, it, the and conversation. It's not, it's not like there was something. It's no, not like, we never we never talked about well, it. Well, you never had a never, conversation about nope, it. You nope, never had like a nope, meeting about it. No. Nope. You probably never read in the scriptures specifically mm-hmm. what to yeah. do, right? Like yeah, this is yeah. something I think that is by the I discernment just, of the Holy Spirit yeah, just, that you understand where things need to fit and i think it's like it's just i think it lands on honor i think it lands on the fact of like like i honor augustini correct and and his Ooh, position because again like like i was i so was in other words can i, I say this can anyone. i say this can i say this so you were friends with both yes yep but your highest loyalty is not yeah. to marari correct to augustini and also my highest loyalty is to god to god and correct. so like yeah, like yeah, yeah. in reality like in that moment i'm like I love I love Agostini way more than any friendship that I have with this girl. And yeah, we have many stories, many moments that God encountered, got like prayed for, like all these same aspect when I was in ministry school. There's a lot of girls that I was very close friends with, mm. but then the moment that they would become when when I say intimate, I mean by they became intimate in a connection with someone where they said, "Hey, sure. we are now boyfriend girlfriend or something like that," or they even liked mm. each like liked someone. I just have a like I have I I have tried to always have a view of like sisterhood and it's I like like we're like like I just I have a lot of sisters. That, right? I feel like that's such because a that's such a cringy Christian but, thing that people people see it as a cringy thing. Right. But but I appreciate that joy because I feel like 
if you categorize people of the opposite sex as sisters mm -hmm. when they're outside of your marriage, right. then it really helps you mm -hmm. identify what it is that they need. And from also you. my conversation with them. Yeah. So like in reality, like so I have two sisters that are older. So mm -hmm. I have always, always been around the opposite sex a lot because they'd always have friends over right. and like things like that. And so I just like I we, we actually just had a conversation with an old friend of ours where it's like some people would find me. And yes, there was moments when I was in fleshly that'd be flirting. Sure. That I was in that I was in that way, but a lot of my life through that stuff was I genuinely have compassion for a lot of people, and like I care about what's going on in your life. Ooh, and so, let's talk, let's so talk about we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll talk yeah. about it. So yeah. like like what I mean by that is there were girls that thought that I liked them just because I was nice to them, and I'm like. I don't like you. Well, I'm just trying to be kind. And then I realized, so that vein, right, that, hey, I don't like you. I'm just nice, right? And then on top of that, my flesh then found, well, okay, wait, so being nice means I'm flirting. So then my flesh was in wickedness, right? But then as I got older, mm. as I got older, I realized, all right, if girls at any time period, at any moment, feel that I might like them because of my compassion or because of my empathy or because I want to have a conversation and I want to be, I want you to feel understood and I want to talk to you about that. If anyone feels that way, I'm going to cut that stuff to the minimum because we actually, I think we talked about this a little prior, the time aspect, consistency aspect, that stuff begins to, it starts sowing things to where it's just not like, you need to realize like that's not okay. Well, let's talk about this you know? too because <clears throat> the reason why I was smiling is because you were describing things that our spouses really need from us. Right. right. So, right. so my wife really needs me to hear her out. Yep. My wife really needs me to have compassion yep. uh, for her. My wife really needs me to be kind towards her. Yep. My wife really needs me to, to be interested in what she has to say. I mean, yep. there's a lot there, right? Yeah, there's, and, there's, this and when a, you there's are, a lot to all of this. And when, yeah. you are, when you are single, mm -hmm. uh, and other people are singing, single. <laughs> right? Singing. Singing. <laughs> and they're single. They're singing and single. They're single and singing. When Make you're single, a, you group, have the group. openness of being available yep. in that way. Emotionally. Emotionally yeah, to everything. other people, yep. right? Yep, yep, because... Yep, 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 yep. Because um, there isn't one specific person who is uh, who is the quote unquote owner of those things, mm -hmm. you know, the rightful owner of those things. So you kind of give them out freely. But then when you enter into a serious relationship slash marriage, you even have to cap out because I feel this. Mm -hmm. I grew up with a mom only, right. not with mm -hmm. my dad. So my empathy muscle right. is very, right. very yep. like yep. strong because. I grew up having to care for a woman mm -hmm. all the time, right? Like, what do you need, mom? Like, she would be hurting or ha ha emotional, mm -hmm. whatever. And so, and my wife and I have had these conversations where she, like, she tells me, she's like, you just have an affinity with women. And mm -hmm. he, she doesn't say it in an unhealthy way. Like, mm -hmm. she just knows that, like, that my relationship with women, because I grew up with my mom, mm -hmm. is a lot of times easier than my relationship with men. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? With older men, too, mm -hmm. right? Like, I, and right. I, 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 not relate, but I'm able to connect with women mm -hmm. a lot easier than I am with men, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is something that is a hot topic for me as well because I really had to work on this. Like I really had to um, uh, set the right boundaries for what it looks like to have the right friendships mm -hmm. and the right, the right boundaries and connections with mm -hmm. people, right? And so um, I found that even being married, bro. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a place where a lot of pastors who who have it who have issues later on and stuff like that and get you know get into bad situations. Mm -hmm. I think that it starts from a good place. Well, I, I really just think so. I, I don't even think it's uh, just let, let's let well, for let me, me let me finish let me finish that thought. pastors. Let me I finish think men. Well, let me finish that thought because yeah. uh, because the thing is that when you are a ministering man, uh, yes, yes, does that make yes, sense? Yes, yeah. Like uh, there are a lot of men who are you know uh, like. They, they kind of just exist in like not in an environment where they're ministering to people mm -hmm. and caring for other people. Like mm -hmm. they're kind of just like they work, they go home, take care of the family, yeah, it's, go it's, back. And it's that's, literally like starting a car. You turn the car right, on, you and turn, turn it off. off right? And, and that's done. like its own yeah. environment where this is mm. even tougher for people who are mm -hmm. actively looking to care for mm -hmm. other people because now you even have to be more wise with those boundaries, right? And so um, I found, bro, that in the midst of, of like, it, because my wife and I have never been in a in an environment mm -hmm. or in a season of our lives when we're not in some way ministering to other people. Right. right. And that's when it becomes even messier, yep. right? When this can become even messier. And what I found out is that sometimes 
my desire to have compassion for a person can be sinful. Mm -hmm. Isn't that weird? Mm -hmm. It's compassion. It's actually a desire to care. Right. But if my desire to care trumps my desire to honor my wife, mm -hmm. then now... Or honor that I, person. Honor that... Or honor or that just, person. Just right? that per it does, but, you but don't even have to it put starts, it the label. But for me, it starts with yeah, my wife, yeah, right? right? Like, right, I mean, right. I'm, like... Well, because we, have, we have <clears> listeners <throat> that are dating, that are engaged, that are single, that are married. Yeah, And yeah, so yeah. it's like, as, yeah. as a single man, I was single when they started dating. Mm. So I had to... I, I had to I had to shift the honor aspect of that. Because as a single person, sometimes, too, you will give too much attention to a married person. Right. Bro, this happens in the church, oh, too, dude. right? Oh, Where you're time. like, yeah. what, that person, and you'll notice it. Like, mm -hmm. you'll be in church, and you're mm -hmm. like, I need to steer clear from that person because that yeah. person, that person's attention quotient mm -hmm. here is unhealthy. It's, mm -hmm. not, a, it's not a good... Yeah. Uh, and so... But anyway, so the bottom line, what I was trying to say is that when you enter into your married years, into your married life, you have to have... A, a very wise set of boundaries for the things that belong to your spouse and the things that other people of that same sex can mm -hmm. receive from you. Yep. And they really shift. I mean, it's like yeah. if they were if they were right. like if let's say let's say you're yeah. like dating and this is like mm -hmm. other other people of the same sex right. dating and then and like then engagement engagement and the, or sorry engagement <laughs> sorry and then he was and, going closer yeah, sorry engagement that means this this right. meaning is like less attention to these yep. and yep. more attention to here right. and then you get married and it's like when you get married there are some of these people mm -hmm. that you're literally not even supposed to be caring for mm -hmm. at all. I'll give you an example. When I was single, when I was single, back to the levels over here, I... doesn't matter. I had sisters yeah. I laid hands on yeah. to pray, but, you know? That's a, I, that sounds a little, little, little he, he, he prayed for them, laid all hands, right? Laid, hand, like, he laid hands like, on like, them, you know? Laid hands like on yeah. the yeah. altar, oh, stuff yeah, like that, right? Yeah, yeah. And, but then, yeah. but then, 100%. as this shifted, yeah. and as my wife became Things the person, right? Things have to shift. Yeah. Then everything had to shift, and so my availability, and I think mm -hmm. the word really, like, the big word for me is, like, the availability emotionally, the availability spiritually, the availability in every sense to another person of the same sex that is not your spouse, mm -hmm. It has to be incredibly different. So that's why when somebody says my best friend and then they say somebody of the opposite sex right. and they're married, I'm yeah. like, how does that even exist? When your wife or your husband is your best friend. Well, or at least yeah. should, should be. be your best friend. And that's Because that's another yeah, question. That's here. a whole like, world. Should yeah. your spouse be your best friend? Yeah. We're not talking about that. I'm not talking about that. I know. We were talking about just how to throw that. We... I'm going to throw that yeah. in there and I'm yeah. going to say, I'm going to say, wait, yes. should be or it, okay. I was about yes. to say, what do you, what do you, yeah, I didn't Like I when didn't it know comes to the opposite one. sex, I yeah. mean, yeah. like if you have a best friend of the same sex, that's the different story. Like yeah. you have a different, but my idiot. Opposite sex. Hi, his idiot. Hit it. No, 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 not that one. That one. I don't know. No, that, no, sure, third sure, one, sure. the third one. No, 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 this that one. one. Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> we we record some short. new sounds. Idiot, 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 <laughs> idiot. <laughs> so, um, Keep so, going. Keep but going. when it comes to the opposite sex, like, I really think that yeah. your spouse should be your best friend. And if they are not your best friend, I think you need, really need to work on that. Mm -hmm. Or you shouldn't have any other person of the opposite sex mm -hmm. that you have a better relationship mm -hmm. with. Yeah. Yeah. A more fun relationship with, yeah. a more uh, intentional relationship opposite with, sex. opposite sex, yeah. a more intimate re uh, relationship with more secrets, like your spouse mm -hmm. should know your secrets, your spouse mm -hmm. should be the person you laugh with, your sp you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And again, it comes back to empathy, it comes back to compassion, because a lot of people, we, and this is where I, I'll, I'll lean into, we 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 purposely shared that we're going to try to not talk in the directions of pastors, and the talks of ministry, because that's a whole nother vein. So let's, I think- And we have a this, little bit of that in our in, a, in, yeah, yeah, in, our, in story. our DNA. <laughs> But, and so yeah. yeah, so but what we really wanted to talk about was the fact of like, all right, as husbands, as men, and just in general, women, you can take this and you can run with this as well as a wife or you know uh, engaged or dating whatever it is. But I think as as just as men in this situation, yeah. um, men tend to be wanting to be protectors. We want to protect people, Ooh, yes, sir. and so in moments. We will start protecting someone oh, in, man. in our flesh. Oh, man. We're protecting them. We're trying to guard them. Wow. We're trying to shield them from stuff. We're trying to, um, you know, they're being attacked. Oh, bro, I've seen this where the marriage between 
this spouse and this spouse. Oh man. Where Talk about you it. are actually friends with her. And this is why, and by the way, whenever I do any marriage ceremony, <laughs> whenever I do it, the explanation that like you no longer on are on sides, you are now on. fighting for the union. I loved but, when you said that. But I loved in, when you said that. In these moments to where we still I still have friendships with you before I had a friendship with Tara. A hundred percent. But but when you are married, now I have a friendship with the oneness. Now I have an individual relationship with you, but if drama mm -hmm. starts happening, I have to be con be a conduit for the union, yeah. not be a conduit for division. And so in yeah. this in this situation, I feel like as most men, sometimes we'll get into the fighting place of particularly we'll see a woman, especially like you again. You came from a single mom, a mom home. I came from uh, you know two sisters and a mom, and obviously my dad was in the picture. But like my dad raised me to you're gonna take care of you're gonna take care of every woman. You're gonna be a protector because my dad was in that way of his family and his mother and his sister, like sure. like in that stuff. And so in those moments, you can start bleeding into the fact of like, I'm going to be a protector of this woman. And then when things start going sideways in their marriage, you start becoming a protector of her Yikes. and you start becoming an emotional support Yikes. and you start trying to, and it may start, as you said, it may have started in a healthy way. You want to protect her. You want to well, guide but there's her. Something you want sinful to about emotionally it. There's protect, something sinful right? about it. And I want to point it out because I feel like, I feel like a lot of, People who fall, I don't want to say just mm -hmm. men. I yeah. think a lot of people oh, that yeah, fall, sides, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Will hide behind that excuse. I just wanted to care for them. Mm -hmm. But, well, and the, but, it's, but, it's, but, 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 so, but, yeah, keep going, but, keep going. Yeah. And I'll, I'll tell you this because I experienced this. There is in some people an unhealthy, sinful desire to be a hero. Oh, 100%. For somebody that they're not supposed to be a hero to. 100%. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, so I got used to wearing the cape mm -hmm. when I was growing up with my mom. Mm -hmm. And I would show up in different seasons of her life. To, <laughs> here I am, right? Super. I want to keep my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I alleyed that for you, uh, and then I you was, just wasted it. I was really kind. I'll tell you off screen. Uh, I'll idiot. Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hey, hey, super. No, stop. stop. <laughs> Why isn't that working through that? This was no. It's not my fault. I'm white. <laughs> no, your fault. You're white. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll tell no, you. No, it is your fault. So, no, I'll, 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 I'll tell me. you off screen my insult because <laughs> Super, I, yeah. I protected all right, you. All right. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> so, so I got used to wearing that cape, and so then what happened is, then what it became for me, the cape became an opportunity to get the attention of that person mm -hmm. by being their hero. Correct. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yep. And yep. so I really think that that's the part that died in me that that. Be, that allowed for health in my relationship, mm -hmm. like my my um you know loving relationship with my girlfriend and then mm -hmm. my fiance and then my wife, mm -hmm. is that I ceased to desire to be the superhero of somebody else, mm -hmm. and, and 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 then and I settled, and by settle I mean in a good way, I settled, I determined, I decided that I was going to be the superhero of just one person. Mm -hmm. And that's my wife. Right. Right. And then and then that kind of leads the that leads the the mm -hmm. the, the order mm -hmm. and the paradigm for every everybody else. Yeah. Right. And yeah. and yeah. and if I was to care for another woman, we are caring for another Correct. woman. And Correct. it's never yeah. without the filter and the companionship mm -hmm. of my wife. Right. And it's always by her leadership as mm -hmm. well. Like, mm -hmm. it's never going to be me going, mm -hmm. man, we really need to go over there and just make sure that she's okay and all mm -hmm. that stuff. Like, I usually, I really back off of that, mm -hmm. bro. And I like, I let my wife have the initiative of caring. If this, a, if it's mm -hmm. a female, letting her have the initiative to care for that, for mm -hmm. that female. Yeah. And then, yeah. and then we're able to like walk in that direction. Yeah. Uh, and then there are, of course, like relationships where like, for example, Emily. Yeah. Emily is like mm -hmm. a little sister to us. And that's a relationship where Tara and I have a lot of trust. She's a, a younger girl, mm -hmm. right? That like really trusts us and loves us. Mm -hmm. And 
uh, Emily does work with us. Like mm. we have conversations with her that are a mm -hmm. part of that. Yeah. And my wife feels comfortable with the fact that she is like a younger sister to mm -hmm. me. Um, and but but, but we say, still have to guard ourselves. But we still have to guard right. ourselves, and be even no. in those relationships, mm -hmm. you have to have so much wisdom mm -hmm. to not be their superhero. Mm -hmm. Even right. those relationships, because, because even in those moments, you're a big brother or you were a pastor. Again, like Emily was one of my students. I was her pastor, and there's many moments of emotional. Like there was her car broke down at midnight, mm -hmm. and she was in here at Puerto Rico, and she gives me a call because her parents aren't picking up. And she's like, and I'm up because I'm a night owl. And and she calls me. I'm like, Emily? <laughs> she's like, so my uh, car's being weird. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm so go over different things, have a conversation. And 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 I'm like, all right. And I'm like, like, I just I just don't think you should be driving all the way down to Clark Road. You know, it's it's almost an hour, 45 minute drive. Right. Like, come to my house. You'll sleep in the guest room, mm -hmm. like, and then in the morning, you know, you're good. I'm going to go tell Stephanie and like, you're fine. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I go tell, Hey, Stephanie, Emily's coming over. Her car is being weird. Sleeping in the guest room. Everything is set up. But you have uh, the trust with your wife mm -hmm. and you have a track record with your wife. Mm -hmm. Right. Cause I want to point this out too. I feel like, but I also, I'm not going to just lean on that trust. No, I understand that. I understand the, that. So, but that's, to, to be able to, but, but I could have, no, this I, is the thing. I just want to, I just want to point out yeah, that yeah, there yeah. are some men right now. Or yeah. women, yeah, yeah, where you are not in a in a healthy emotional position Correct. with your spouse mm -hmm. to have that kind of uh, tr trust and freedom, mm -hmm. right? Like where you're like where your wife is asleep mm -hmm. and you're like, hey, Emily, yes, arrive. Mm -hmm. you, my wife is not awake. Mm -hmm. Go sleep in the guest yep. room, and you know what I mean. Like yep. all those different yep. steps, yep. we have developed yep. a relationship of family right. with this person yep. to be able to like arrive right. there. But I really want to advocate for the fact that there are some oh. couples that you're nowhere near that kind of trust. But I'm gonna be honest. Even in that moment, yeah, I asked the Lord. Yes. Lord, is this something yeah. I need to yeah. be doing? Yeah. 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 And on top of that, I could have. We were talking about this off screen before. Like I could have just been like, like, yeah, Emily, you're good. Come over, sleep in the room. Like you're fine. Like go sit. Just because you have trust with someone, don't go and like keep pulling on that trust. Like continue to build trust yeah, yeah, with yeah, yeah, someone. Yeah, yeah. And as you continue, because again, it could have started. It could start in that type of simple it, it, yeah. innocence yeah. of a moment of with a little sister, of someone that I'm shepherding, of someone that we care for. Yeah. I mean, just be like, well, she just came over. You know, and that is how things start. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm like, that's where there's just the moments of compassion, the moments of empathy, the moments of mercy. And again, when souls are exhausted, when physically you're exhausted, these are the moments that enemy mm -hmm. tends to try to sneak in. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so in these things, like you're not most things. Again, I've been around it. I have family. I have friends that have gone through, you know, uh, the aspect of cheating, the, uh, the just in reality, just adultery, OK, mm -hmm. adultery in general, whether secret adultery within a screen and adultery with a person okay so so there's adultery in general and most of it started with i didn't even mean that they, they i didn't, even, I, think I, that didn't that even, I didn't even think of this as the man mm -hmm. uh, even as the woman we're like it didn't i was literally caring for them because again there was moments of just it just it kept it, it it's like a snowball and so in those moments of relationships, as you, as an individual person, again, I want to talk to men, as a man, and you, you are married, or you're engaged, or you're dating, you need to start looking at the relationships you have in front of you. And they could be some of your best friends. You may need to have a conversation with them yeah. where it's like, hey, I know we've been sisters. Hey, I know we've been best friends for 10, 20, 30 years, whatever it might be. I know we did all of these things. I knew we grew up together. Like, you may need to just go in be a man yeah. and have a conversation an adult mature emotionally mature conversation and say hey you know uh, i'm gonna at, i'm gonna like, suggest something else because yeah. i don't even know how you would have that conversation With, i i personally i just i you just, can just you know boundaries. what i did you know what i did i just did the homer simpson have you seen that meme <laughs> of him going into, into the, the bush yep yep and he just and like you disappears can. you can Beca you because can. the reality is that I feel like you could also make it even more weird and awkward if you have conversations like that. Like, I just want to encourage you and tell you, like, just just become unavailable. Become, become Be, bring the attention that you're disappear. once giving them. Yeah, yeah, disappear in an honoring way. That's like, because you can disappear in an honoring way. You can disappear. No, I think in a the way most. I like, would say the most honoring thing yes. is to disappear. Like, <laughs> like, because even like even with Emily, like, I give an yeah, example, and yeah. she, you know, she watches our podcast. Yeah. So, hey, you know, it's like I'm intentional to. Re recede and retract mm -hmm. myself yep. so that 
so that also she's not depending on me Correct. as a big brother, right? right. And so, right. so I feel like, and it's just honoring and it's good yeah. and it's healthy yeah. to just be like, hey, listen, um, you need to figure it out. Right. You know what I mean? And right. you, or hey, you need to go and see mm-hmm. God about that. Yep. Or hey, you need to go and have that conversation. I don't have a whole lot for you about that. Yeah. You know, or because you might have the answer. You might have the answer. And you may need to say, yeah. Yeah, I should probably not have this conversation. Because maybe it's just because maybe we're just. It, I've been helping you too much, again, or, or, I've been or like, it's yeah. just in reality. Again, you. This is where I believe maturity, and this is the prayer that I try to ask God constantly. And I haven't been perfect all the time in this, but Lord, give me eyes to see what you're doing, and also give me eyes to see what the enemy is doing, because the enemy is Beware playing a game. Yeah, he is yeah. shooting arrows. Mm. He is having schemes, and mm. so he is roaming around like a roaring lion. With ain't no, he ain't got no teeth. He is. Guess mm-hmm. what? And this is the thing: the enemy is doing something. And then the statement that the Lord gave Cain: "Sin yes, is sir. crouching at Ooh, the talk door. About it. Sin is yeah. crouching at the door, waiting. Well, and to too, take like, you, even if you don't sin." The enemy just wants to put you in really bad situations as well. well okay. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, we've talked so, about this before. So I like, really get tired of us blaming the enemy. No, 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 no. The no, enemy but, has schemes. But let me tell you, let me tell you this. Like, but, the enemy wants to steal, absolutely, kill, and, kill and, destroy and destroy everything your in your life. 100%, 100%. And so, I'll give you an example. This is a funny one. Can I give you a funny one? Sure. No. So, um, this is back when I was a worship leader. <laughs> we never played the trumpet, but we did have a saxophone. You did, but um, man, so, chick was great. So I was a twenty. Not chick, not like a woman. His name was chick, his name was way. Charles. Yeah, yeah, they called yeah, him chick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I had to um, clarify that because uh, it sounded like I said that chick was great. No rabbit trail. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, was, I was trying to honor honor the fact I didn't call someone a chick. <laughs> anyway, um, so. I was a 26 year old worship leader. Such a young man. Young man. Such young a young man. And a new violinist in our team was joining, and she was in her 70s. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 26, 70s. Okay. The likelihood of anything yeah. happening that was wrong uh, or sinful, uh, adulterous rather, is like so incredibly just. I mean, like the chances are so low. I love how you almost said, "Come on." <laughs> well, because I was, I was, there, there are sugar mommies there and daddies. There so. are, <laughs> but 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 so so nowhere in my mind it, right. am I thinking there is even a necessity mm-hmm. to have boundaries mm-hmm. with a seventy-year-old woman right. when I'm twenty-six years old. Mm-hmm. I was wrong. So. Uh, this woman was joining a team lover, by the way. She actually a- a- already passed. Mm-hmm. Um, she's dancing, bro. She's dancing with the Lord. Come on. Um, and uh, and just the sweetest, just just a, such a pure pure woman. Uh, we she didn't have an issue. I didn't have an issue. But uh, w- she was gonna start playing on the worship team, and she needed to get her violin mic'd up in a violin store that was like forty five minutes away. She was very uh, um, just like. Uh, she didn't know the process of like miking and all that stuff. Like she had always played an or- orchestra, so she never had to do any of yeah. that. And I had that knowledge base and she was joining the worship team that I was leading. And so I wanted to help her with the process. And so I told her that day, I said, Hey, I'll go with you to the violin store. Whenever you go to get everything installed to make sure that everything works out. Mm-hmm. So we are going to leave. And I remember this story. Yeah, we're going to leave. And I'm like, I'm like, I had, pl- I had been planning to be driving, um, uh, separately and then in my mind i go what a waste of gas it's 45 minutes like i could just ride in the car with this lady right i'm gonna ride in the passenger seat what a bad <laughs> bad idea for no for no yeah. real i mean for no reason that like i mean she wasn't inappropriate i wasn't inappropriate but guys the moment i got in that car and I, we were like two minutes down the road i was like this is so strange this is weird <laughs> This yeah. is weird. Right. And the reason why it was weird is because she was a single woman. Yep. People talk. Yep. You know? Um, and then also, I just spiritually felt like I was in the wrong place. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So he's telling me to... We're, we're at we're at 28 minutes. So, so we have a minute and 30 seconds to close this bad boy So out. So I felt like I was in the wrong place. And so yeah. I, I, that's, that uh, instance just taught me and helped mm-hmm. me realize that the boundaries of involvement and availability and presence from the opposite sex to the, to the other whenever there's a married person, they have to be... Now, if I would have been single, I probably wouldn't have cared. 
right. to go in that car with right. her. It probably wouldn't have mattered. But the fact that I was married, I just did something. And so, yeah. So that's what we wanted to talk yeah. to you guys about today. Yeah. We want to encourage you. Uh, make your spouse your best friend. Yeah. Make your spouse your best friend. Be aware just because you have empathy and compassion for people. Like, like you may need to draw some lines and boundaries yourself. And in reality, like, just, just take as a man. I'll talk to men for the last 20 seconds. Take responsibilities for your actions. Do not blame God or the woman that he gave you for you sinning. Do the right thing. Crouching at the door. Be wise. Be wise. Go take action. We love you guys. Love you guys. Go be fruitful. Deuces. I'm going to do this again.